I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see these cute penguins. And so me being a brand builder for the last seven or eight years, I thought, uh, and always look at NFTs even today as a supply and demand model. And I thought penguins were the most universal PFP. And why I think that matters is because uh, I think being the most universal, I think has the highest uh, or, or the widest net for demand because they're finite tokens. You know, they have small token supplies. I thought, well, the, the one that probably yields the most demand with the smallest token supply probably is going to have uh, the most opportunity for a run. And, and naturally, I just believed in the brand and I believed in the penguin. So I uh, started collecting a bunch. Unfortunately, it didn't go the same way as kind of punks and apes uh, early on as, you know, Pudgy Penguins was one of those first early projects that kind of kicked off the big NFT bull run. And, uh, you know, six months later, the opportunity came around to buy it. And uh, here we are today. I didn't really know what I was getting into. I think the math of the business made sense. So at the time, all you had to do is just calculate the royalties and you like, you know, the, the business was making $200,000 on a bad month. So technically, I didn't really think there was that much risk. But in hindsight, kind of understanding everything that I know now, it was a really risky move. And uh, I kind of did it a little unconsciously, but thankfully it worked out the way that it did. Naturally, I believe in myself. So I'm not buying like you know, two, I'm not rolling in money. So you know, $2 million, two and a half million dollars in this case is, is not a small amount of money for me. And so I believed and I, and I knew instinctually, whether I logically understood it or not, I knew instinctually uh, that this would be, uh, that, that, that this was something that uh, I needed to do. And so uh, we joke about it all the time. I mean, we're super grateful and thankful for being in the situation that we're in today. It could have ended up a lot worse and uh, we're thankful that it didn't. And uh, we still have a long ways to go. So no victory laps yet. Uh, still have a lot of, uh, a lot of the business to build, but uh, you know, two and a half million dollars to, you know, the valuation we are today, it's uh, a pretty, pretty awesome ride. I did, and so the, the anchor that inspired me was the Board Ape raise. So Board Ape had the highest, the, the highest valuation seed round of all time, basically zero to 12 months, $4 billion company, give or take. And what I saw, and the reason why I bought Pudgy is because I saw what they did and I said, look, like, you know, that stuff is not easy, especially now that I've built this thing. And, but, but I saw what they did and I said, there's nothing that they are doing that I can't do or that I can do better. And so I was like, well, if they were able to pull it off, uh, you know, this this universal IP. I thought Pudgy Penguins had so many different places they could go that I think Board Ape couldn't. Uh, and then understanding my skill set, understanding the people that I knew I was going to bring on board, I kind of looked at the landscape and I looked and I, and I thought, I said, look, if they could do it, I know I can do it and I can do it better. Obviously, different market conditions, different times, but I, I'm, I'm very sure that when NFTs come back and are at the spotlight once again, uh, we will take NFTs further than they've ever been in the past. So uh, this was part of the plan, but exactly how it transpired, uh, I, I, can't, I can't tell you that, 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 that I knew it would go down the way that it did, but uh, thankful it did nonetheless. I think it just comes down to the IP, like what makes sense with the IP. Like naturally you close your eyes and you think pudgy penguins. I know I did two and a half years ago and I'm like, this is a billion dollar IP business. And uh, I think a lot of people try to reinvent the wheel, whether you know, making NFTs about metaverses or this and that. I think at its core, they are, you know, status symbols, they're Veblen goods and they're collectibles. And so when I look at like what makes a collectible valuable, I'm a huge collector in the real world. It's nostalgia, it's brand affinity. And how do you create that? You create that with product, you create that through content. And that just seemed like the obvious next step at the time, you know, if you kind of look at it, uh, you know, n now hindsight is 2020, every project is looking to build IP. Every project is looking to build affinity and love. Uh, but when I came around, it almost felt like, nobody was doing it. And so we subsequently kind of pioneered, though it was the thesis and it was the hot topic. You know, these guys had hundreds of millions of dollars and they never did it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to take credit for pioneering IP, uh, you know, on the blockchain that, that obviously I think was, a, you know, decentralized effort. But ultimately, like, what does it mean to brand build? What does it mean to build a real company leveraging these digital collectibles, leveraging these first editions? I will take credit for pioneering that because uh, I think nobody was doing it the way that we're, we're doing it today. I, I see the same opportunity that I see in the L2 space that I saw in the NFT space. I look at the L2 space and there's nothing that anybody's doing that is super impressive to me or that I think I can't go do better. Furthermore, we have a ton of products within the Igloo and within the Pudgy Penguin ecosystem that is powered by L2s. And so I'm thinking to myself, I'm looking at the other L2s, I'm looking at you know their theses and what they're doing, and I think there's, you know, I'm, I'm not impressed, right? And they're not fulfilling the needs that I need as a consumer crypto builder. I'm looking at the future of crypto, and to me, the future of crypto is glaringly consumer. We've been the face of consumer crypto for the last two and a half years. And it's like, nobody knows the pain points. Nobody knows the struggle. Nobody knows the things that need to be solved for consumer crypto the way that we do, because we've just been building it longer than pretty much everyone else. And so when looking at the opportunity, uh, I just think there's a fundamental error in, in the mindset and in the ethos and how all these L2s are building. And you know, I'm very confident that we're gonna do the same thing in the L2 space that we did in the NFT space, which is you know basically win and, and be the top dog. I, I, 
I have uh, every intention in doing that. And I, I think we're also going to capture the entire consumer narrative. I think uh, when you think uh, consumer blockchain, who do you think of? Maybe Solana, but on EVM, it's a ghost town. I think nobody's owning that consumer and uh, we're going to be the people to do it. A PFP is a great representation of understanding who somebody is without really knowing who somebody is. I mean, naturally, I can tell the difference or I instinctually know the difference between like a Board 8 PFP and a Pudgy Penguin PFP. They're different personality types, right? They're optimizing for, I think, two different things. In Pudgy Penguin's case, I think it's like a really philanthropic evangelist, you know, kind of uh, kind of PFP where like if you're rocking it, I know you're probably a good person. I know you're probably funny. I know you're probably lighthearted. You know, if you're specifically in crypto, I know you care about, you know, pushing crypto boundaries. I know you care about the underdog and, you know, what it means to take something from zero to hero. So there's like a lot of things that I think uh, 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 Penguin embodies that I think makes it easily identifiable. And if you're a board ape, then I know you're in the cool and, and you're trying to be like, you know, hip and in and, and the streetwear scene. Uh, so it's like I can kind of assign interest. So for that reason, I think this is why these things are so powerful and so much more powerful that I think a lot of people give them credit for. Uh, I find myself being able to message somebody or, or in, in the past, you know, before I was the CEO of Penguins, like I would be able to message one of the top crypto traders because he was a penguin and he would respond to me because I was a penguin PFP. Uh, and I think this just gives like a huge edge that, you know, especially in an industry like crypto, you know, most people don't know this, but this is an alpha driven industry. You either know what's going on or you're, or you're playing a 99% a losing game. And alpha is really given by by tribes, right? And, and by community members. And, and those are most easily identified by profile pictures. I think it just opens up the ecosystem. And obviously I want them to participate. I want them to bring that culture in uh, in abstract. I mean, that's a, that's a huge thing. A lot of people wanted to name us Pudgy Chain, but ultimately I thought that was like a, a huge handicap cap like I can't the number one L2 in the world naturally from a from a branding perspective can't be pudgy chain like I don't think that's you know that doesn't that doesn't incite people to go and build something bigger than pudgy which is like I want somebody to give me a run for my money uh, especially on, on the abstract rail so I think from our perspective and 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 I'm in the business of rewarding my early believers right so like how can I create an ecosystem that benefits them but they also have to reciprocate that value I'm also not in the in the business of just like hey you buy something and you don't do anything for years and just reap all the rewards Words. Uh, I don't really like that that, that type of cadence. But nonetheless, uh, it, it doesn't change anything for them outside of, I think, just add tons of new opportunity to the ecosystem and just more and more benefits uh, to, to you know, uh, their assets and, uh, and what they're collecting. Not at all. So my situation specific, specifically, I have zero worry because I issued no NFTs. Right, so I bought into something. So I think a lot of the problem is around the issuance. Uh, but anything other than that, I think it's a nothing burger. But for the for the space in general, I also don't really care. I mean, if you're going to go after OpenSea, you got to go after Sotheby's, you got to go after Nike. There's that you got to go after Pokemon. You got to go after everyone. CGC. I mean, this is just this is nonsense at this point, right? Uh, ultimately, there has to be some sort of level of accountability in the space, right? Which is this idea that it's like if you buy something, right? Well, whether you buy it at a hundred thousand dollars or a thousand dollars, like you are making that purchase. That is your conscious decision and at the end of the day you know people are selling this stuff at, they're, they're jpegs right like uh, you, you can misinterpret them a hundred different ways or you can try to you know have somebody sell you a bunch of different ways but OpenSea specifically I think it's in its own uh, unique sub section where it's like not selling people on a on a false promise or a dream and so for that reason uh, I'm not worried